Hi Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your September 1st to the 15th, 2021 reading for you. Now this reading is going to be focusing on increasing our intuitive abilities, and if it resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bull sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Aquarius. September 1st to the 15th, 2021 Aquarius, increasing intuitive abilities. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. At the bottom is our rooted self. The left hand side is our inner self. The middle, our heart, our emotional self. The right hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. At our root, we have the world, which is absolutely beautiful, and the magician. Blessings. Blessings are coming forward, Aquarius, because the world is being open to you if you can stand before the altar of your being, claiming your elemental intuitive power and knowing that as above so below as you think it so it will become so be very mindful of your thoughts be very mindful of how you are crowning yourself and also your crown chakra energy now within the inner self we have the goddess of water i love that i love that creation i love that wound i love that sense of of becoming and we have the eight of air the eight of swords it's like can i fly away from and out of the hurts and the pains and the disappointments can I fly above and one of the things with eagles is that they can fly higher and see more clearly than like any other bird and so here there's going to be a power to that there's there's a force to that during this time we have the king of cups coming through we have the queen of cups here we have the king of cups here and the king of cups is again water sign energy Pisces Scorpio Cancer if we have water sign energy within our chart or if we have or if we are born on the cusp with Pisces, it's coming through very powerfully within our inner self, but also within our emotional self. And it moves us to the three of pentacles. There's going to be a fact during this time that we cannot just work simply alone, but we also have to embrace and understand the threefold aspect of ourselves, the child, the adult, and the wisdom. And as we do this, or the maiden, the mother, the crone, the, the boy, the adolescent, the, the man, and so this is going to be a time where we start to see that aspect of ourselves coming forward and we start to see how we are evolving and where we want to be and what it is that we desire and what it is that we're looking for. <coughs> Excuse me. And it brings us to our public arena, which is the four of wands, which is celebration, success, prosperity, and the nine of pentacles, a sense of 
really savoring the moment, not having to move quickly through it, saying, this is the moment that I am savoring, that I am embracing, that I, I love and that I desire. And this is what's guiding me to the place that I need to be for myself, for my soul, and for, for my being. It moves us to the energy we need to be mindful of, what is the energy that Aquarius needs to be mindful of, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Oh, this isn't the energy we need to be mindful of. Well, okay, so here it's personal power, it's the chakra energy, but I did grab the wrong cards. So we're going to leave this out for energy we need to be mindful of, but this is the energy we need to be mindful of, which has already been meditated upon beforehand and shuffled. So angels and spirit guides, show me clearly guide this reading and show me clearly. Okay, that makes sense. Solar plexus ch chakra is going to say that in following our gut, we can really feel that the only way that we can be successful is for others to see what we're doing as a success, as prosperity, as abundance. And this is going to be a time for us where to embrace our personal power, to be really mindful of stepping into our personal power. It's not about what everybody else thinks. It's about the way we connect with and see ourselves, the way we are empowered, emboldened as we move forward. So that's going to be a very big thing for us. This is also Earth sign energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. We can have somebody in our lives or we can meet somebody who is just so grounded. It's like things are done a certain way and they have to be done a certain way. And this is going to be a time where we're saying, why? My personal power comes from going against the grain. Why do I have to conform to be like you? Why do I have to conform to a world that maybe I don't want to live in? You know, not a dramatic, like I don't want to live here type of way, but it's kind of like, why would I want the existence that makes you happy when that existence would not make me happy? And that's going to be a really honest and open question for ourselves during this time. And it leads us to our chakra energy, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides, angels. And it's the inner child. I love this card, it's absolutely one of my favorites. Whenever I see the inner child, I love to do the exercise of the adult that we are today, holding our arms open to the child that we were. And not the child that had everything going for them where everything was right and you know rainbows and, sh and sunshine, but the child who was not sure of themselves, was overwhelmed, who you know didn't feel like they were worth anything. And this is a time when we open up our heart chakra and we say, I see you, I'm here for you, I love you, I care for you. Let us move forward, let us embrace, you know, let us be that dynamic team I will always listen to you. I will always make time for you. I will always respect you. And I will always hear what you're saying. Not just say that I'm listening and talk over you to say, oh, well, this is what you really mean. And so when we open up to our inner child, we're opening up to that part of ourselves that felt ignored, that felt overwhelmed, that felt unseen, unloved. And that really starts to bring us to the world. That really starts to open up our world for us in a way that we hadn't expected when we are opening up the world or when the world is opening to us, but it's going to be both ways. We open to the world. It's kind of like, I can open up my front door. I can move forward. I can embrace this. And the world opens to us and says, come step forward. You know, it's not that scary a place because we're finding where we stand within the world. Now it could be in the middle of a city surrounded by people in the middle of the noise and the hustle and the bustle that could be for you. Or it could be out in the country somewhere, you know, raising sheep and, being quiet and being contented in, in the quiet. Both are contented and both can have equally beautiful lives, but it just has to be what's right for the individual soul. Where we choose to live says more about us than it does about where's the right place to live. And so when the world's opening up to us, when we embrace the world, it says more about us than it does about the world because it says how we see it and how we embrace it and how we love it and how we're moving forward within it. And it brings us to the magician if the world opens to us as the world is, how do we claim it? How do we stand within our passion or power ourselves and say, as above, so below, as I believe it, so I become. And this is going to be maybe a little bit tricky. You know, how do I embrace what I love, what I want, what I need? How do I open myself up to me? And we have the magician come forward. It's saying, what am I crowned with? Because as above, so below, as I think it, so it becomes, as I write it, so it becomes, because it's going through my mind. You know, as I speak it, so it becomes. And it all has to do with the thought. What are we thinking about in the quiet moments? You know, are we completely stressed out? Do we find ourselves just aimlessly scrolling on our phone? And, you know, any, any spare moment we have, it's, it's taken up by that. Instead of, you know, living and connecting. I know I have that problem terribly. It's like, okay, 
put down the phone, put it away, you know, put it in the bathroom drawer somewhere where I'd have to, you know, walk in to get it. And now it's like, okay, be more connected because that's the way we embrace our magic. That's the way we stand before the altar of our existence and say, here I am, here I am. And this is what I desire. This is what I want. This is what I need. And as we say, this is what I want. This is what I need. We say, this is what I need from my elemental power. This is what I want from it. You know, this is who I am. This is what I desire. This is what I open my heart to. And we find ourselves soaring above the chains and the doubts and the fears, the eight of swords, the eight of air. When we talk about air here, we're talking about the breath. And this is the constriction of breath. We might find ourselves short of breath. We might find it not as easy to just breathe in calmly, not as easy to meditate, not as easy to be quiet because the eight of swords is where people can live their whole entire lives. Anger, doubt, fear, chaos, being caged in, thinking there's no way forward. And the eagle soaring is saying, oh, yes, there is. Yes, there is a way forward. Yes, there is the extraordinary. But it's mingled in with the ordinary, so we don't see it. We poo-poo it. We deny it. And what Spirit is saying here is let yourself open to it. Let the door open. Let yourself be guided. Fly higher than the doubts and the fears. Let your mind and your insight and your passion soar to heights that you hadn't imagined. And it brings us then to the goddess of water. It brings us to the nourishment of the child we once were. It brings us to the nourishment of what we are creating and what we desire and what we want and what we need. The, the goddess of, of water, the, the queen of water, is the most compassionate and loving and, sac and embodiment of the sacred feminine of all the queens. And so here we are embracing that energy. And what's so interesting is that as we are protected, as we are embracing the waters and as we are diving deep into the essence of ourselves, because we are made up of, oh my gosh, I forget the percentage of water, but it's some absolutely astounding percent. And the world is made up of water and the oxygen in our air, you know, the, our air is cleaned by the water, by the sea, by the ocean. And it moves us to the King of Cups, which is saying here, the King of Cups, embracing the water once again, and embracing the most sacred feminine energy of all the kings, is saying here, I rule only myself. So here, the queen, she nourishes. She nourishes, she protects, she helps grow. That which is beautiful, that which is, you know, powerful for us, that which is our creative force. And the King of Cups says, I live by example. I lead by example. I move forward in my life in the example of myself and what I desire. And I open up the door. I can't make anybody else be any other way than they are. But I can raise my energy vibration by standing before the altar of my existence, embracing the, the magician and saying, I'm not accepting that base level vibration. There's so much more out here for me. And there's so much more that I am embracing for me. And it brings us to the three of pentacles. It brings us to embracing the triple aspect of ourselves, the triple aspect of the universe, divinity, what we desire from life. It also lets us know that we're not in it alone. There are people always going to be working with us, always going to be helping us, guiding us, you know, protecting us, connecting with us. Even if they're there just for a moment, even if they're the person who, you know, helps us pick up our groceries from the, the parking lot when our bag rips open, you know, just little random acts of kindness, acts of of compassion, acts of humanity come forward. And that connects us with the world in a way that builds us, that builds us in knowing that we're not alone, that we are connected through beauty and power and compassion of heart and soul and self. And as that is embraced and as we are embracing this, we also have to make sure not to give too much credit to anybody else or take too much credit for ourselves. It's that beautiful symbiotic relationship of give and take a power and understanding. It's kind of like the teacher cannot teach if he does not have a student, but the student cannot learn or be a student if they do not have a teacher. And so this leads us to the four of wands. This leads us to a place of celebration. This leads us to a place of knowing what is intrinsically sacred within our lives and saying, this is what I'm married to. This is what I desire for my life and myself. This is how I'm opening up the doors. And as we do this, and as we say this to ourselves, we start to see that we're changing. We start to see that we're embracing a greater idea and a greater compassion and a greater focus and a greater want from our world. And as we do so, it's not the want of, I want this, so give it to me now. It's the want of the soul. It's the opening up of what we desire and saying, there's so much more out here than I've ever even seen. Why am I limiting myself? And so we have celebration come forward. We have this embrace of 
of the fire and the passion and the intrinsic value of ourselves and the sense of there is more here than will ever meet my eyes or that I will ever understand. And then it brings us to the nine of pentacles, which says celebrate. The tortoise doesn't go very fast. And so they celebrate every single step. They celebrate the way that they move forward in life. And that's what we need to do. Instead of being like the hare who just runs through it and thinks, oh, I'm, I'm great. You know, I can enjoy it all later. I can enjoy my success later and then everything falls apart. It's like, no, enjoy where we are now. It's not always looking towards the future or looking in the past. It's being right in the present and saying, this is my prosperity. This is my success. This is my bounty. This is what I've developed and created within my life. And this is good. You know, we can say this is good. Like we can be like question mark. I don't know. Sure. Let's go with it. We can say this is good and absolutely mean it. We can also know that this is the beginning, that this is the beginning of something so much greater and it will be opening up doors that we didn't even know were close to us. Confidence that we never even thought we could have. And as we embrace the fact that we stand within prosperity and we move ourselves towards prosperity. So even if we're in dark moments of the soul where we think, oh my gosh, you know, things can't get any harder. Things are, are so overwhelming we start to look at the blessings. We start to look at what we desire, what we're building towards. And we start to see ourselves moving in that direction with absolute tenacity of spirit, soul, and self. It moves us to our subconscious ch chakra message, which is clarity, the third eye chakra. And this is opening up our clarity. This is opening up to our insight and our ideas and what we desire and what we want and what we need. And this isn't saying what everybody else wants and needs from us. It's like the clarity of who we are spiritually and personally, the clarity of how we walk forward, what we desire from ourselves and where we need to be within ourselves. It moves us then to our subconscious energy to be mindful of, and that's the Hierophant. And it's saying here, oh goodness, the King of Pentacles and the Hierophant. So it can be Taurus energy that we have to be mindful of, but it can also be boiling everything down to, it has to follow a tradition. It has to follow a certain way. There can't be dreamers. There can't be, you know, this, this break against convention and the way things are supposed to be. And so we need to be mindful of this energy that wants us to say, when we're on the spiritual journey, when we're opening up to our spirituality and to ourselves and to our intuition and to our connection with the universe, that it's wrong because it's frivolous. It's not frivolous. It's going to be one of the greatest things that we ever do in our lives because it's going to open up so many new doors, so many new business opportunities, you know, job opportunities. It's going to open up, you know, places to live, how to live. And we're going to see ourselves moving in a, in a way and in a direction we never thought possible. It leads us to justice at our root. So this is Libra energy, but this is also the sense. So if we have Libra within a chart that comes powerful at our root, this is also a sense that we think justice is highly important and justice is highly important, but we have to be discerning with that justice, meaning that everything doesn't follow a rule book. Like people don't come with a rule book. It would be nice if they did. But what we're going to see here is that everything isn't black and white, white page, black print, everything printed out. You understand everybody, you know, perfectly because they all come with rules. What we're going to see is that we need to be discerning, judgmental about the energy we let into our lives, that we need to say what balances my scales what moves me forward, what brings me in harmony in peace with myself and what I desire. And that's going to be important because we're going to think, especially us Aquarius, we're going to think, oh my gosh, that's so rude. You know, that's so rude. I can't do that. And this is going to say, oh, yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. Because once you start saying my time and my energy matter and the people that I associate with matter, you start to see everything shifting and it's not being snotty. What it is being is, is discerning. It is discerning because we know that we are sacred beings and we know that we are connecting with other sacred beings and we don't want people who pull us down into base energy vibration, but people who raise us up. It moves us to our subconscious inner self and that's the two of air. I love the, the trees look like lungs. I think that's so beautiful. And this is very much embracing our breath, whether our breath be powerful, whether our breath be, you know, hindered in one way or another, this is embracing the power of our breath and our voice and saying there's strength within me, even if others cannot see it. This is determination. This is focus. This is understanding. This is knowing that there are ways forward that we hadn't even imagined as we claim the power of our voice, as we claim the power of our vibrational essence and pushing that out within our voice saying, this is me. This is what I desire. This is what I want. This is what I need. And it moves us to our subconscious emotional self, which is the eight of swords. 
And the Eight of Swords is saying, do not stay trapped because we have the Eight of Swords right here, the Eight of Air. And the Eight of Air is saying here, be free. Be free and fly as high as the eagle. And our heart is going to say to us, but wait, remember when you messed up? Remember when you didn't do things perfectly? Remember when everything fell apart? Remember, remember, remember. And it's like, okay, yeah, I get that. I see that. But that's how we learn. We don't learn and we don't gain compassion without rocky roads, you know, and heartbreaks and pains and disappointments and despairs. This is a time where we are embracing ourselves and we are learning from the trials and the tribulations we've been through because that's how the soul elevates. That's how intuition is built. That's how we come to rely on our instincts because if everything was perfect, we would never learn. We would never evolve. Compassion would never come. It moves us to our subconscious public arena and that's the hierophant coming through so as it is something to be mindful of within the energy to be mindful of this is also going to be a blessing in the public world in the sense of this is what i want this is what i need this is where i'm headed i hold the keys and i'm opening up the door and there is nothing and no one that is going to stop me hold me back or deny me there is more here than meets the eye there is power there is determination and there is focus and i embrace am embracing the very essence of myself what is my truth? What I am married to? Hierophant comes through as the marriage card in the major arcana, the four of wands in the minor arcana. And so when we say, what am I married to? It's what have, what is intrinsically important to me? What have I given an oath to, to not turn away from and to stand by, to embrace? And this is going to be the part of ourselves that we just can't, you know, flip our off, say, you know, I don't matter, or this doesn't matter about me, or, you know, I can disconnect. It's like, no, I need to be connected with all of me powerfully and personally and and courageously and a loving caring you know compassionate way it yeah it moves us now to to being done to the end of our reading and to the the ability to fly forward in a way that just surprises us all right aquarius i hope this reading has resonated with you i wish you nothing but light love peace and happiness may harmony always be with you i'm sending loving healing energy to each and every one of you I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the new heights and the new beauties to come. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Aquarius. <laughs>